The most vital thing we must understand is that there is fit and there is style. These two terms are often conflated, but to understand style, you must first understand fit. The black and white yes and no decision. The only real thing we can say objectively. These pants are so tight, I'm afraid you'll explode. These pants are so loose, I could go spelunking inside of them. Style, the subjective fit. Super wide pants, super skinny, bell bottoms, boot cut, straight fit. We shan't not understand style until we understand fit. These are not all my jeans, by the way. Also, if you like this shirt, I got it on a website called Depop. I also got this really cool men's Wrangler jacket on Depop. I also got these super cool shorts that the seller guaranteed were my size. Perfect fit. What I really like about Depop is how honest the sellers are. My goal for today is to teach you how to get a perfect fitting pair of jeans. I have many rules that I have come up with over the years that I think will help you, so let's go. A lot of people will say, measure your favorite fitting pair of pants and start from there. You can do that. I think we need to start at where it all began, your hips. So we're actually gonna start at the waist, obviously. I tried to do this exactly the same on camera as how I explained it, and it got shockingly graphic. So I'm going to not take my clothes off, but you need to take your pants off and then take your shirt off or lift your shirt up so you can expose the soft underbelly flesh below and wrap it around your natural waist just snug enough. That is the general number you can look at when you're looking at waist sizes of pants, but don't automatically assume I'm a 30. That means I'm a size 30. Look at the size chart immediately on any site. I also see a lot of people saying you only need to get this measurement once. That is also not true. You should take this measurement literally every time you are buying pants. Now the problem begins here when you're measuring your favorite pair of pants, because if this is your favorite pair of pants, this is a size 29. If this is your favorite pair of pants, this is a size 30. But you will notice that when we measure this waist, our jeans are just about 13.75 inches, double that. Versus if we measure this waist, our jeans are 15 inches. So these jeans, while they say 29, are technically like a 28, maybe even a 27 to some brands. And these jeans are more authentic 30s. But interestingly, both of these are Levi jeans, just from different eras. Now there is a common piece of advice given when people are buying jeans, whether they're fancy or cheap, that you should size down one to two sizes. That is, I'm sorry to offend you, poopy caca advice. I hear a lot of people say that and they'll argue very strongly about that. What is happening is you are introducing tension to your jeans and tension is the enemy of all good fits. Whether you like super skinny fits or super loose fits, tension, no good. Because when you buy pants that are too tight, they will eventually fit. You'll be able to button them, you'll be able to walk around, but they will make your legs sore as you walk. And the worst part is when you wash your pants, you have to do it all over again and it just gets so tiring. And then eventually you'll realize all those little bits of tension don't look too good. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's spreading. I can hear it on my ham radio. The news of my balding is spreading across the world. And that's why MD Hair reached out to help me and sponsored this video. Whether you're balding or not, you want your hair to look healthy, nice and shiny, Juicy. I want people to tell me my hair looks juicy. And MD Hair is here to do exactly that. You can take a picture of your scalp and MD Hair's AI will analyze every single follicle and give you the cold hard truth about what's going on up there. Then MD Hair goes to work customizing a routine that works perfectly for your hair. Wait a minute, AI doesn't sound scary if it's gonna make me ha. Then MD Hair zooms all the products to your door, you open them and you are provided with 24 seven dermatologist support from MD Hair. Mine all say restore on them, which great, glad that's being addressed. And if you're interested to customize your hair regrowth, you can check out the link in my description and use my code ironsnail70 to save 70% off your first month at checkout. Thank you MD Hair. We're actually not gonna measure the entire jeans. We're gonna focus on the top block, but the hardest part to measure is right here because there's not a lot of consistency between manufacturers. So you always have to look up where the manufacturer is measuring the thigh because some will measure it from this point, the four corners. Another one says you should go like an inch down. Another one does it at a slight angle. It's a disaster for consistency. You could also measure the rise of your pants, but chances are if you're a guy for whatever size you're around, it's gonna be pretty standard. If you are not a guy and you wear women's pants, 
Very important to measure it. But for most men, 11 or 12, depending on your size. This is 12 exactly. You go from that little and measure it up. I like higher rises. I think it looks better and I have a very long torso. So if you have a long torso, you probably want a higher rise. The final thing to note is that even if you measure yourself perfectly, your favorite pants perfectly, you match them up onto a website perfectly, all manufacturers of clothing products have tolerances. It could be a quarter of an inch, it could be more, it could be less, usually depending on how much you pay for the jeans. So even if you get the exact same pair of jeans, they may fit slightly different and sometimes the cheaper brands a lot different. the top block. This is where all of the evidence is as to whether you are wearing a good fitting pair of jeans or a bad fitting pair of jeans. The goal of clothes is to let them do a lot of the work to make you look very good. So our job is to make the top block's job as easy as possible. And we can do that by releasing all tension on the top block. That is from the skinniest of fits to the tightest of fits, the top block has to look perfect. The perfect fitting pair of jeans should have you constantly questioning whether you need a belt or not. They should be floating there. Too loose, obviously you think, I put a phone in my pocket, I need a belt. Too tight, they hold up no matter what. There's no chance that you need a belt, no matter what you're putting in your pocket. First test, everyone, pretty easy. It's called the palm test. Can you take the palm of your hand and shove it into your pants without looking like you're someone else is shoving their hands into your pants, AKA, without doing this, without really just buckling back and sucking in. So these pants are too tight. They may not look too tight, but if I wanted to do the palm test, I would have to pull this out, suck my gut in a little bit weird, and look like someone else is trying to do this to me. Now these pants, I purposely bought too big. I can slide a palm in, but then if you look, I could slide a whole other palm in there. I could stab a whole neighborhood over and put their hands in my pants and not even notice. What we're looking to do is to relieve all tension across the top block, but we have to figure out where that tension is. There's a lot of different things that you can use to do this. I found a lemon works the best, so you're going to take the lemon, don't cut it, and just, obviously I'm just kidding, to actually find the tension points, we'll need a tomato. What you're actually looking for, it's the fruit of your pants. It is the buttons or the fasteners that are on your jeans. It's a little harder to see with zippers because they'll give a bit more of an even tension. But if you have a button pair of jeans, it's incredibly obvious when you look at the fly because you'll notice two things. Number one, you just have tension marks. The buttons obviously don't take up the entire amount of fabric. So when they're too tight, that little small area is pulling that fabric too hard and you'll start to see ridges or tension there. The other obvious thing on these pants will just be that the fly flap that's hiding the buttons will start to open because the fabric under that is being pulled too hard and kind of exposing itself to the world. However, if you have a zipper fly, a button fly, a Velcro fly, whatever, it doesn't matter because the top button will reveal everything. When we look at this button, you will see that the top part of the jean is folding over. The reason it's folding over is because the button is pulling so tight that a little indent is created that makes it easier for that part of the jean to fold. So when I bend down, it flips over. And that's not 100% of the reason why it's caused. It could just be your stomach's hanging over. It could be for a million different reasons. But the easiest way to see tension in your jeans is right at that area. Now to be totally honest, it's kind of impossible to get that perfect pair of tensionless jeans because your weight is gonna fluctuate every single day. If you can nail the top block fit on your jeans, chances are everything else will fall into place. All of a sudden you can play with skinny fits, straight fits, wide fits, boot cut, whatever you may want to try, unless you don't fit the mold. You have really big thighs or really big calves or something like that. Then you kind of have to work a little bit harder. Introducing Franken jeans and then finally, what to do if no jeans ever look good. The first way to do this, the Franken find, is kind of the brute force. That's actually essentially not the brute force method. It's a little bit more tactical, but it's laborious. So what you have to do is say, okay, this is my waist size. And then you have to find a lot of jeans that fit you well, or you can measure and say eight inches is too small. I need to go to 10, I need to go to 12. Break jeans down into different areas. So you have the calves, you have the thigh, you have the top block, everything like that. These are the size calves that I like. These are the size thighs that I like, and this is my waist size. So Levi's, you could probably find a fit there, or you can look at every single brand's measurements and see, finally, what will just fit you correctly. But if you are someone that I know who probably doesn't want to be named, nothing fits. Everything just looks wrong, but they fixed it, and this is how. Tailoring. They just get their jeans tailored, and that's it. They get them a little too big in the waist, but they fit the rest of their leg perfectly. They go to a tailor, and they say, can you take in the waist? And then I'm telling you, I have seen their butt in jeans and I'm like, 
I've never seen jeans look so good.